Welcome to Convoy Radio. This is the podcast reporting on the ever-changing freight industry. My name is Jake Henderson. And I am Michael Lewis, and we are going to be bringing you ideas and leading voices from this fast-changing world of transportation and logistics. Now, Mike, our show is going to bring together the people that you want to hear from and get their take on the future of our business. Tune in for an inside look at today's opportunities and tomorrow's revolutions in the trucking industry. And with that, another episode of Convoy Radio is underway as always my fantastic and lovely co-host michael lewis michael lewis in a hat today what's going on man you know woke up a little bit late my hair has been longer than it's probably been since i was in junior high getting a little uncontrollable and decided to throw on this cool uh, brewery hat that my brother-in-law gave to me just to make an easy day of it why is your hair the longest it's been since junior high what's going on in your life that you just don't want to stop and do a barber I mean, shop Generally during the summertime, there's so many fun activities to be mm-hmm. doing. And I got a haircut last, I think, eight months ago. It was beach volleyball season. And so I kind of wanted to just let it flow around during beach volleyball season. It's not the longest hair yet, but if it was the right day and it was just cattywampus, it was it had a little flow to it. You're a big beach volleyball guy? Love beach volleyball. Season's almost over, man. Have you it been is. playing this year? Uh, I have. I had a couple injuries that gave me setbacks. I have to... Probably actually get shoulder surgery for one of them uh, this winter, but okay. it'll be a quick recovery. It's not like a folk or reconstruction or they're not going to go too deep. It's just something um, from an old injury that I never took care of a Was long time ago. Was it like a ago. muscle or a uh, ligament? I separated my shoulder. Uh. Um, so you like tear the thing that connects uh. the collarbone and the shoulder. And yeah, it's just causing a lot of problems in there to keep you've always been kind of riddled with injuries i got a lot of them haven't you a little bit reckless a little reckless in my youth yeah Yeah. i had the idea that if i just tried hard enough or wanted to do something enough that it would happen and a lot of times it would end up with an injury see i was (laughs) reckless in my youth too but it was it wasn't in the form of athletics yeah so my body took a different toll from, (laughs) from all of that but now i'm you know what's actually interesting is I started playing on a Convoy softball league. Yeah. Big deal here at Convoy. We got, oh, I hate to say it, we got to the championship game undefeated. Wow. We went 12-0. and 0. Championship game against this other company. I'm not going to say their name. It's like Voldemort around here. And we fell apart and we lost the championship game. But that's when I realized that I'm not a young man anymore. And I'm saying this as a 28-year-old man. So I'm sorry if I offend anybody out there for thinking that 28 is old. But I swing the bat. Two days, I'm sore afterwards. Wow. I run, I pull a hammy. I get the warm ups going, man. Get those elastic That's, bands. I have four or five elastic bands and a lacrosse ball in my backpack. Just and so at all times, you're just ripping those bands. Oh, yeah. Whenever I'm going to do something now, just because I've had so many injuries to almost every part of my body. And it's like, those are the things that'll nag. And so, like, disc injuries to the back, you got to get that warmed up. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to be upset with you. A tore muscle that connects, like, your sternum to your chest. Not like fully tore, but Michael pulled it. Yeah, that was a painful one. So, you just got to get warm. Yeah. But, you know, I'm excited for getting into uh, the new segment that we're Oh, doing you're today. right. So you're reeling should, me back in. I mean, I could go on all day about activities, but what are, what are we doing today? So here's the deal, Michael. This has been an idea since the inception of Convoy Radio, right? Mm-hmm. And what we're calling them are Convoy Short Hauls. And these short hauls are going to be kind of mini segments, just about anything we want, really. So today, we're going to be doing the history of the trucker hat. Is that correct? Yeah. And okay. I'm excited about this one. I think... I've worn trucker hats my whole life. I've always known them as trucker hats, but I've seen everybody wear them. Like you online, Justin Timberlake says he's been wearing one since he was 17. Aston Kutcher. Aston Kutcher. A lot of bands started to wear them in like the 70s and 80s. Really? Yeah. I don't remember exactly which bands they were, but I know it was... Um, and like the punk rock movement for a little bit. Dude, you're talking to a punk rock guy. We I don't remember wearing trucker hats, dude. Hold on. Bands that wear trucker hats. See, I know that yeah. like like R and B singers probably would like wear like a trucker hat. I never wear a trucker hat until I was probably twenty two years old and I got into logistics. Yeah. And they gave me one with my company. I still wear that hat today, six years later. But they're cool, right? I mean, they're very simple. You have the foam front, generally has a company logo on it and then they always have that mesh breathable back and i thought it was initially just a fashion statement but the background of these trucker hats uh that we've kind of checked some articles out on is actually like pretty interesting and cool to go back into the inception because truckers didn't always wear 
trucker hats, no. right? And like, everybody recognizes it. That's the weird thing. Like the word trucker hat, like you know exactly mm -hmm. what that is. Do you bend the bill of your trucker hat or leave it completely flat? I let my hats do what they're going to do. I agree. If, if they end up bending, great. If they end up staying flatter, great. I'm just going to let it, let it ride. Yeah. And it's interesting that we talk about Bill because what were the original trucker hats like? Like where did the concept come from? You were telling me a story about Milkman. What is it back in the forties? I think it, I don't remember the exact time. It might be earlier than that, but yeah, it's like around that time when, and the reason I say Milkman is that that's like the stereotypical image that I have in my mind is like the old military or milkman or I don't know exactly what the hat was called. Let's see. It used to be the oh, here mechanics it is. cap. That's correct. From the 1930s until about the 1960s, truckers were provided with a type of peaked cap known as the mechanics hat. And then it was adopted in the 1950s by the greaser subculture. Yeah. Right. So I'm picturing them down in a like a what are they what do you call those things where they used to drag race like uh, the runoffs. Yeah. Right. Like down there, all smoking lucky stripes with their mechanics hats. on. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it kind of blows my mind because these hats and it was usually more professional, like uniform, almost looking hat. It mm -hmm. would have the name of the company on it. I don't know what the rest of the attire was, if there was a company uniform that they wore as well, but it was a very company based hat that you'd wear yeah. for what carrier you drove for. It was part of a standard uniform. I think I'm even taking it farther back to like the nine. I'm still picturing the milkman because I think yeah. it's really cool. That this is actually like the origination of the trucker hat. So like when you're picturing like an old timey TV show, again, sorry if I say old timey and it was just when you were a kid that, you know, life goes on, but you, you picture the old timey milkman and he's got what a six pack, a six pack of cow milk mm -hmm. and he's rocking his little mechanics hat which ultimately became the trucker hat yeah and so let's talk about the inception of the trucker hat yeah before, thank you i think the design is interesting and in how it parallels to other types of hats but like when this started would be trucker hats as you know you think about getting them as handouts from different companies um i've seen Breweries have one. The hat that I'm wearing is close to a trucker hat. It's not exactly a trucker hat, but it's similar. That's um, a hipster trucker hat. It, yeah, that it's, it's along that line for yep. sure. Yep. I've seen restaurants have them, suppliers, but it started out with these rural communities having services that they wanted to advertise. So you'd have feed companies who mm. had grain feeds and different livestock feeds that they supplied. You'd have John Deere would have trucker hats because they were just all these service providers for rural communities and farm communities where these truckers were driving. So as an advertisement method, they would go to truck stops with these trucker hats and hand them out for free to truckers. The trucker current hat, the mechanic one, didn't look super comfortable. It was very warm. And as we know, truckers have to be outside long days in like all types of weather conditions. It can be really hot and your head's going to get massively sweaty in this mechanics type hat. Yeah. And the mechanics hat was like thick wool. Mm -hmm. and, I, and again, I'm going to date myself. I don't know when air conditioning in vehicles came around. My dad had like a 64 Corvair, no air conditioning. Mm -hmm. So right up until a point, they didn't even have air conditioning in the cab. You'd have to stick your head out the window to get some fresh air. And then you risk losing your wool mechanics hat. Yeah. If you're sticking your head out. Or any hat, probably. That's it. So the idea of trucker hats being a unique form of marketing is actually really, really cool to me because it's like the idea of slapping a sticker on something today. Like you see all these kids slapping sta skateboard stickers around and band stickers around. And that was like what the original purpose of the trucker hat was, right? So they hand out all these hats and then these truckers would walk around, they'd go through their normal life, they would do their job. And these companies are getting almost free advertising minus the cost of every hat that they hand out. It's like a guerrilla marketing. And it's super smart because they're doing it in the areas where these truckers are delivering to the truckers are going through rural areas, going into shops to get food, get supplies, and it's going directly to the target market. You might be a feed store provider or like, like a farmer for cattle, dairy, whatever. And these truckers are making delivery stops at places that are potential buyers for you. So it's really a pretty ingenious marketing plan. But then with that, like how did these truckers decide to wear this over the mechanics hat? Like what about the trucker hat was more alluring? I don't know, man. They're stylish. One. They look cool. I think they're cheap to make. Mm -hmm. Two. I don't know. They're And snapbacks, man. And, and look at the breathability, too. Yeah. I mean, the back is that mesh. You have 
the mesh back that you can wear for all day, it's going to be breathable compared to your mechanics hat. Yeah. And it's going to sit higher up on your head to kind of give a little bit more space for your head to breathe. Mm-hmm. And so like you think about the baseball hat, which doesn't have the mesh back and it's going to be that kind of cloth material all the way around. Those sit a little bit lower on your head or in a little bit of a tighter fit. Whereas a trucker hat has that tall foam in the front. They're going to be a little bit higher up. And I think it's just going to be a more breathable, comfortable wear. Like when you're wearing something all day and you're working as hard as a trucker works, you want to be as comfortable as possible. And I think while it fits to your head and you can do all of the movements and loading and unloading or whatever you need to do, wearing the um, trucker hat, it's also very comfortable and breathable. Yeah. I love to see how things kind of progress naturally from milkman to mechanic to greasers. I think that's my favorite part about the trucker hat. And then all the way to, to current day. So now a lot of celebrities are wearing these trucker hats. I think it was big, Michael, 2012, 2013, 2014. Now I, don't, I wouldn't even call it popular. I would just call it normal. Yeah. Right? Like there, if you walk in a trucker Not hat. A trend. No. But it, like nobody would bat an eye. Not even a little bit, yeah. So there's a lot of drivers out there that are super cool and they have no idea. Oh, they know. Oh, they know. They're just okay. trending. <laughs> okay. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just too cool to... to but yeah, I mean, this... And the thing that made it so catchy, I think, mm. is that it's what you got on a little bit earlier is the cost effectiveness. Mm. There are so many different websites that any company can go to, upload a logo. You don't have to have a department that makes these for you. You don't have to have a contract with a manufacturer. There's all these custom companies out there that you can go to and you can make trucker caps for 15 to $30 a pop. Mm-hmm. And that's like the ones that I've done for my friend groups where it's 10 and less in an order. Yeah. You imagine you get up into the hundreds of orders and the cost probably comes to 10 to $15. Super simple. Any company can do it. And like so many of them have decided to do it because people love wearing hats and people love wearing trucker hats. That's just great marketing. I feel like almost every company has some form. I've never been a to a brewery that doesn't have them. I mean, I'm sure they're out there. It is but. big in the brewery. Uh, if you could have any logo on a trucker hat, what do you think that logo would be? Are you saying like of a business? Anything. Okay, because I've made trucker hats. Of course you have. <laughs> Not like for <laughs> truckers. It was for like an athletic tournament. Me and my buddy played okay. this volleyball tournament and we didn't have anything to show that we were like a team. So I went online and made some custom beach volleyball trucker hats. Okay. That doesn't answer the question. I know. If you could have like, I dated a girl in high school uh, and her dad, hardworking, salt of the earth gentleman. Like when I looked at him, I would just think like, that's what elbow grease looks like. And he wore a Mountain Dew trucker hat. Yeah. I saw that in the list of ones that were early adopters. Cause yeah, I mean, we all know how, like when you're in the cab, if you don't have the AC, like you're talking about, you need to stay hydrated. Mm. You need to have a drink on hand. Why not have beverage makers advertise using trucker hats? All the truckers are at a truck stop. You see Mountain Dew everywhere you go. Yeah. Buy it. And you're, you know, you're probably delivering to a lot of gas stations and Mm -hmm. convenience stores and marketing that too. So I think, well, I don't know if I'd have a Mountain Dew one. I think I really like Yoohoo. Have you ever had a Yoohoo? I've seen you have them. I need to have one. So there's a story to this. I bought, I bought like a 24 case of Yoohoo. And I was trying to, <laughs> I was trying to sell them around the convoy mm-hmm. office, trying to create a little second business for myself. Here's the issue though. I was trying to sell them warm. <laughs> uh, so they weren't well received. And two people started calling them chocolate water, which I think is an endearing term, but I guess in, in marketing terms, it's probably not the absolute best. Yeah. So I've still got about 17 Yoohoo stashed away that I just, I can't get rid of and I can't keep drinking them. I'm going to get a tummy ache, Michael. Mm-hmm. You know, Yoohoo's excellent, but you can't have three Yoohoo's and just go on with your day. But if I could have a trucker hat, Yoohoo, Yoo-hoo would be the one. Yeah. Yoohoo trucker hat. I wonder if they're out there. Um, and dude, Absolutely. I did check. I did check. Patrick Stump of Fallout Boy was known for wearing trucker hats. So that's in kind of the punk rock Ugh. era. Fallout Boy is a band. They're from very close yeah. to my hometown. Yeah. Very pop punk. I guess, you know. Pop punk for sure. Yeah, I guess we won't get into musical opinions here. Yeah. We'll do, we'll save that for another one. We'll That's do, correct. Uh, road tunes. But if I was going to have a trucker hat, I think, and if we're going to, I'm just going to pick a company brand that I think would be fun. I think I'd do some sort of fishing brand, maybe Ugly Stick. I bet they could have a pretty cool That's like a hat. fishing rod? That's a rod. fishing rod. Yeah. Okay, that's sick. Or. It's not an easy thing to. It's not easy. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be tough. Know. Blue uh, Fox would be a cool one, I'm sure. These That's are companies a spinner like, brand. Okay, what's a spinner? What is it, like a reel? Uh, no, a spinner is a type of lure that oh, you God, use in like rivers. It's a 
It's like a little metal piece in the middle as the hooks yeah. at the bottom. And then it has a little like, I don't know if you call it like a lip or like a little metal piece that spins around as you mm, reel. I know what you're talking about. Like a flashing fish. I went fishing in Hood Canal not too long ago, caught a salmon. I saw that. And we, had, we were jigging, which mm-hmm. I learned you just kind of throw your thing in there, put it down on the bottom, raise it up a couple feet and just kind of rip it up. Like you're yep. lifting it up and down, lifting it up and down to mimic. I don't know what's doing that down in the water, but we caught ourselves a salmon like it. Yeah. That was a big salmon too. It was, it was not bad. About eight pound salmon. Yeah. I was eating it for a few days, but Anyway, this was our first short history of the trucker hat from milkman to 50s greasers to free gorilla advertising for companies all the way to Ashton Kutcher and Fallout Boy. And now the most natural hat. Yeah, there's, you know, tons of drivers on the roads cooler than they even know it. Or maybe they do know it and they just don't have to flex on people like that. And I should have I should have worn the custom one. Today. That's correct. I should have worn I should have worn my hat. Yeah. But anyway, this was a convoy short haul history of the trucker hat. Until next time, thank you. Keep that dirt side down. Thanks for listening to Convoy Radio. Remember to email us at podcast at convoy.com with questions, comments, truck tips, and stories from the road. Please subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Spotify, and Google Play. Convoy Radio is recorded at A-Train Studios in Seattle, Washington. Your hosts are Jake Henderson and Michael Lewis. Produced by Eric Ledbetter, Elise Van Buren, and Brett Howe. Content and support by Greer Lynch, Robert Kasner, and Connor Olson. Get free access to thousands of loads and book directly through the Convoy app. Download it today in the App Store or Google Play. Visit convoy.com for more information. Truck, yeah. Thank you for listening to Convoy Radio.